Hello. I would like to answer a question. Why is a negative times a negative positive? The short answer is so that algebra is relevant to real world applications. So let's look at an example to show that negative 2 times negative 3 is in fact positive 6. I'll need to invoke two ideas. From geometry, we need to understand that the whole is a sum of its parts. So take this rectangle, call this the whole, and if I was to cut it in half, then now this whole is the sum of its parts. These two parts make up the whole rectangle. So I could express that by saying that the whole is the sum of its parts. Or equivalently, we can also say that the difference between the whole and one part is the other part. That is to say, if I take this whole and subtract from it this part of the whole, and that part, well, let's see if I can make that a little more clear. Just to remind us that this whole is made up of two parts. If I subtract from the whole this part of the whole, then what I'm left with is the other part. The whole minus this part equals the other part. Again, I need to invoke two ideas. This is the idea from geometry. Uh, from algebra, we need something else. Algebra is using these uh, algebraic symbols to represent meaningful uh, scenarios. But from algebra, we need to understand that multiplication over a sum is a sum of products, or more precisely, a number multiplied by a sum, b and c in this case, is equal to a sum of products. In this case, that would be a times b added to a times c. This is also known as the this is also known as the distributive property. Because it's because of the distributive property that I can multiply polynomials. Take for example x plus 3, x plus 2. You can multiply those out and algebra tells us that you get x squared, that's x, the first term times the first term. We get a 2x, that's the first term times the last term. We get 3x, that is to say the second term times the first term. And last but not least, we get the last term times the last term. In this case, it would be 6. Now in arithmetic, we often regard subtraction as addition in disguise. So let me do one more example. x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. Well, that is going to be the same thing as, this is really addition in disguise. If you think of it as x plus negative 2 and x plus negative 3. And regarding it in this way, I can do here the same thing as what I did here, just with negative 2 instead of a positive 2, negative 3 instead of a positive 3. And so, just doing precisely what I did before, that's going to be, again, first times first. In this case, I get x squared just like before. In this case, I get a negative 3 times x. In this case, I get a negative 2 times x. And in the last pair of products, I get a negative 2 times negative 3. Then I could say x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus, and well, this is exactly what I'm trying to show. 
I don't want to, uh, um, we're, I aim to show that negative two times negative three is positive six. So it's not clear right now. So I'm just going to leave it like that. This is the algebra. This is the distributive property. And so again, um, I just need to borrow these two ideas from geometry that the whole is the sum of its parts and from algebra that multiplication over a sum is a sum of products. So now, let's see if we can put the pieces together. If I want to consider now a, an arbitrary square such as this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say you, say you partition the square with a vertical line and a horizontal line. So here's a vertical line, here's a horizontal line. And let's say this vertical line is two units away from the right-hand side, and the horizontal line is three units away from the top side. These lines partition the square into four rectangles. So, for example, again, if I regard the the vertical line is two units from the right-hand side, and if I call the side length of the square S, it's an arbitrary side length, then since the whole minus one part equals the other part, I can then say that S minus two is the length of this portion of the square. And again, assuming that this the side length is S, and that the horizontal line is three units from the top, this would be the whole minus the part equaling the other part. And with these ideas in mind, I should be able to uh, articulate the area of each of these four sections of this partitioned square. So for example, um, I want it, what I want to do now, so this has an area of S squared. Notice that this part over here in the lower left hand section right here has a, this one's actually a rectangle, it has a, a base of S minus 2 and a height of S minus 3. S minus 2 times s minus 3. And that would be the area of just that section. What I'm, what I'm interested in, in this time is going to be the both of these sections on the right combined. Um, that will be hopefully clear in a moment why. But for now, since this rectangle has a base of 2 and the height of s, 2s, this guy has an area of 2s. Because it has a height of 3 and a base of s, the area is 3s. Just this section up here in the corner, it has a base of 2 and a height of 3. So the area here is six and we're going to call this the the green section so i've effectively taken the whole minus this strip minus this strip but in doing so i've subtracted this section twice and my goal is to come up with an expression for the blue region. And at this point, I'm pretty close. It's the whole minus the part minus the other part. It should leave me with the blue section, except I've subtracted this section twice. And so I'm going to fix that by adding it back in. And so this is, a, this is that, that idea from geometry, that the whole is the sum of its parts. And and now with this idea, you can see that the areas can be represented here 
here, minus area, and adding that area. So this is an idea, an idea from geometry. And what we just showed a moment ago is that from algebra, is that if I had a x minus 2 times x minus 3, it equals x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus negative 3 times negative 2. And again, the question I want to answer is why? Why is negative 3 times negative 2 positive 6? Algebra says this. Geometry says that. Again, algebra says this. And geometry says that. That means that if I was to regard the x from algebra as the side length of the square, then this expression is the same as the area. This expression is the same as the total area. This expression is the same as the area I was subtracting. This expression is the same as the area that I was subtracting on top. And this product should be equal to the area of that green section. Therefore, negative 3 times negative 2 has to equal positive 6. So there you have it. Uh, one, this is one of many possible answers to see why a negative times a negative is a positive. But I'm curious, can you think of other applications that require a product of two negatives be positive? This is just one. Thanks for watching.